Hello everyone, and welcome back to uh, Star Trek Nighthawk, or Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk, the fifth season, they're the fifth episode of the second season. I apologize in advance, my voice is not as good as it usually is, um, so if, I hope it lasts the session, otherwise, yeah, it is what it is, the show must go on. I'd like to introduce a special guest, um... Captain Crawford from my Star Starbase or Star Trek Adventure Cerberus Station um, series is here as a guest star for reasons that will become apparent, and those reasons are going to be apparent in the Captain's Log. So, Captain Singral, please take it away. Captain's Log started eight two nine log started six point five. The Black Shield has been recovered, and its personnel have safely been returned and treated. We had them tractored and returned to Deep Space 15. Among the crew members that the Black Shield had in its tell was an android in the custody of Commander Tool. For whatever reason, he kept this information from Director Chalmers on the brass I'm unsure, but he did ask me to keep him in my custody. I'm not quite sure what game he's playing, but I'll honor it nonetheless. New Year's Eve is indeed fast approaching. And the crew itself has. Captain. Captain? The suspense is killing me. Right? <laughs> what has the captain done? What has the crew done? We're supposed really to celebrate New Year's? New Year's Eve soon. Do they know it's New Year's time at all? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, because that. when I got arrested, it was Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows it. <laughs> uh, you there, Captain? I'm here. Sorry, there was something that required my attention. Let me back up. All right. So New Year's Eve is indeed fast approaching, and the crew itself is excited. I have no idea what Commander Thushan has in his wake since he was so eager to represent Christmas. But... I'm looking forward to the possibilities of him gleefully interpreting this holiday. <laughs> and log. Okay. Sorry about that hiccup. That's It is what it is. The show must go on. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, with the Black Shield in Tractor Beam, uh, the crew of the USS Nighthawk <clears throat> enter the Carceri <clears throat> Nebula, and the... Deep Space 15, a.k.a. Cerberus Station, where the Blackhawk will need to uh, be to receive serious repairs before she can get underway once more. <clears throat> uh, upon and upon um, entering, or sorry, upon cresting the threshold of the nebula, passing through its enter gate, enter uh, through its entering aperture, uh, you are immediately hailed from the station. This is this is a uh, Deep Space 15 c calling the USS Nighthawk. This is Lieutenant Darval speaking. Well, good to see you again, DS15. It is a it is indeed a an honor to see you again, the USS Nighthawk. I um, well, our scans indicate that the USS Black Shield is um w w uh, running on minimal power. Is everything uh, operating normally? Not at the moment. Go ahead and uh, get them in tow, and let's get some repairs started. I'll forward you a few of our logs, and we'll talk about it on board the station. Understood, Nighthawk. Uh, please be aware that both of our dry docks are in use. The USS Black Shield will have to wait its turn. Uh, the C Captain Crawford is most interested in uh, meeting you upon your arrival. Well, I'd be sure not to keep him waiting. Ah, the USS Black Shield is cleared to dock on uh, docking bay 9. You are cleared to dock on docking bay 3. Message acknowledged and received. Thank you. Sign real out. And Captain Crawford, in your ready room, you are notified that the USS Nighthawk is, um, in, is, has entered the station and is undergoing docking procedures. Uh, I will go to the uh, docking bay to meet the crew of the Nighthawk as they exit their ship. All right. 
Okay, so uh, because I don't have every single station backdrop loaded, we will instead just go to the start page. <clears throat> ah, the docking procedures goes off without a hitch. Uh, while you are inside the uh, interior of the station, you re uh, you realize that there are three ships that are currently undergoing um, re rip ah, repair. Uh, your sensors indicate they are the USS Perseus, a Bellerophon class, that is almost ready to move out once more. The other docking or the other internal docking bay is taken up with a Hestia class ship that is the USS Roosevelt that is missing its fourth nacelle. Uh, the third ship that is currently in queue is the USS Apophis, which has some very nasty battle scarring along its upper saucer section. Um, there's also a very interesting ship on the inside, one that is very familiar to you. It has been... Uh, a quick scan indicates that the docking clamps are active, preventing its premature escape. And that ship is once is the um, Void Nightmare, the Draven ship that you guys have uh, encountered before. It is, of course, still missing its railgun, but for the most part, it's in decent shape. Once the docking clamps are, or once the docking clamps are secured and the airways are or the air locks are extended, uh, the crew is free to disembark the station. Uh, quick, uh, a quick scan of the of those waiting. Uh, there's a few friends, a couple partners, and one uh, looking at or standing at um, parade rest would be Captain Crawford. The Nighthawk. Welcome back to Cerberus Station. Mm -hmm. All right. Who wishes to meet the captain? Besides the captain. All right. You're Mr. Congeniality here, Mr. Uh, captain Crawford. So, uh, Captain Singral, you wander down the path as the uh, yeoman... Uh, takes the last of your intelligence reports and scurries away. Captain Crawford, I was told that you wanted to speak to me. You did. Um, how was the journey back here? Uh, not as eventful as the journey leading up. That was more of an adventure. You know, black sure. shield, behind enemy lines, etc., etc., hiding out on the moon. Planetary super weapons. Well, we've been dealing with some things ourselves, but not necessarily as it seems as dangerous as that might have been. Oh, well, it was an entertaining sequence of events. I'm glad to be rid of them. You are. Um, please. Uh, hold on, just one second, Rami. Yes, Captain. Uh, have a couple of the, uh, some ensigns and maybe a pot to prepare a uh, small meal for the crew of the Nighthawk and myself in the conference room whenever you get the time. Of course, Captain. I shall pass on the instructions. Thank you, Rami. <laughs> You're welcome, Captain. And with that, she blinks out of existence. Wow, I've been here 30 seconds and already you're going to whine and dine us? You really... <laughs> whatever's coming up must be important. Uh, it's... Because... How many... How, ah, good lord, I'm sorry. English is hard today. Um, How long has it been since the events of our session last week? Uh, it has been roughly uh, two days. Okay. Well, since you're... A little late for Christmas, I figured uh, tonight would be the perfect time to feed you in celebration of a late Christmas, as it were. And as you kind of look around, if we go to the content room, some decorations are still being taken down and such. Mm -hmm. All right. That. 
Okay, so because I had the foresight, the conference room is one of the, or the conference lounge is one of them that I have copied over. <clears throat> uh, upper or lower floor? Um, probably due to some of the information we'll be exchanging, probably the lower floor. That makes sense. Okay, we will go down there. Okay, we have the conference room. And of course, Niles is present. As is the captain. So, Captain, just as you, or captains, just as you enter the lower floor of the conference lounge, uh, two ensigns, or two yeomen, I should say, uh, quickly scurry away, uh, leaving a miniature buffet of human and beta Z delicacies on the main conference table. Captain, please uh, help yourself and he'll just grab a small plate of food and sit down at the table. And that's very thoughtful of you. And whatever Crawford is grabbing, Sangro's going to grab a much smaller portion of the same thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, Captain, what is it that needs to be discussed? Let's see. He pulls out a uh, data pad and is kind of scrolling through it a bit. Um, the I'm sure I know this out of character, but what species did the Nighthawk encounter whenever they rescued the Black Shield? Um, they re they encountered the Vitars and the uh, the Zell. Okay. Oh, uh, as I'm sure your trip behind enemy lines was an interesting one. There's something I believe I could use the Nighthawk for. Have your crew encountered the Jin Sul, Captain Sengral? Actually, they haven't. Okay. We know about them, but it's indirect. Well, uh... Two of the ships that are being repaired right now here in the station, the Apophis and the Roosevelt, they were actually scouting around the area when they were ambushed by a species that, as you're probably learning now, are called the Jinsul. They're, to say the least, uh, the information I've gathered says that the Apophis has found the Jinsul homeworld, which is at the far edge of the Beta and Delta Quadrant border. Uh, the system is two red dwarfs and one blue giant, and the homeworld is held in place between stars uh, with a massive space station, apparently, in orbit. And that's when they were captured. But to add on, the Jinsul, as far as we know, are... It seems to be almost a religious cult for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, there's zealots seeking to eliminate, and he'll use very heavy air quotes, false light sources from the sky have a high concentration of chronoton particles that imbue them and their ships slash structures, some of which might be sentient. And according to them, uh, our station in the Transwar Pub isn't their concern, but I want to ascertain their nature slightly more thoroughly, and that's where you and your crew would come in. <laughs> to be clear, even though there's a heavy sign of chronotons, I'm sorry, did you mention that it has the, they have the possibility to be sentient? Um, apparently with the incident that we had on Christmas Eve, we found to be entities of some sort that were made of chronoton particles uh, with the decision being made mostly by our chief engineer and another engineering officer of ours. We uh, this concentration anion sweep of the station 
that dispersed them. We don't necessarily know if it killed them, per se, but it did. they did show signs of possible sentience, and he'll send over some, basically some of uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan and uh, Specialist Nia's reports about the entities. Well, go ahead and speculate, Captain. If they are sentient and you did disperse them, would they believe that you were, you are responsible? In, in terms of actually, if unfortunately the worst came to worst and you didn't manage to kill them. You cut out just a bit for me. That might be my internet. No, I was That's basically at... a long, long story short of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, TLDR, I was asking if we, if you guys managed to disperse them last time around. Uh, and we, you did manage to kill them. Would they imagine that we're responsible? And once again, you cut out for me. My internet's <laughs> apparently not cooperating. I let apologize. Me, let me quickly change the server location. There we go. Let's try this. Okay. So so basically, if, okay, go, go if, ahead again. <laughs> if the Kanaton protocols are sentient, and you managed to disperse them and unfortunately kill them, could we speculate if they know that Starfleet is responsible or not? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, not that we're aware at the moment. Because they seem to be... Their patterns almost suggest that they were curious about this place in a sense, but knowledgeable enough to think that we are some kind of organization. Do they show any other signs of coherent pattern recognition? Uh, the closest one that we had appeared to be one that seemed to be jumping up and down, for lack of a better way of putting it, but that's the most we have. I'm going to go ahead and ask the dreaded question. Regardless of whether these particles are sentient or not, is there any evidence of temporal displacement? Yeah, was there? No. There, okay. um, if, there were no... Oh, sorry, go ahead. If, I'll let you um, in this instance, the chronotons indicated um, being slightly out of phase with this universe. So think of that episode where Jordy and Ro yeah. became... Um, out of phase with everyone else on the Enterprise? Something like that. Um, it would more suggest that they were but so if we dispersed them, we probably just sent them back to where they were. Now where they were, we have no idea. So I'm curious why you think the Nighthawk specifically, or any other intelligence vessel, would probably be best suited for this mission. I mean, to my knowledge, it seems like you still have Commander Area in your employ. Is there nobody else on Cerberus Station that could necessarily take a closer look at this? She's the only one we'd have at the moment, but due to some of the, the fact that the Nighthawk has some Hawk has camouflage capabilities. No, we do indeed have a uh, active cloaking system. <laughs> Quote unquote. Due to <laughs> what your ship is capable of, it to me seemed obvious that they would be the. You ah, good Lord Almighty! I am having a hard time talking. Um. <laughs> And the Nighthawk and its crew would be best suited for something like this, since we would probably need just a bit of stealth, as it were. Well, this is certainly one of the more unusual mission requests that I've gotten, at least in terms of the all the specific mechanics involved. But it does sound like a unique one. Go ahead and forward everything else to uh, the ship, and if there's anything else or any other crew members that I need to speak with, I'll go ahead and do so. 
course, and um, whether or not you need them, uh, Specialist Nia is more than at your disposal, should you want to take him with you. He knows a bit about the Jin Soul, considering that he's been on one of their ships and apparently managed to shut down one of their weapon systems, which was interesting. I'll be sure to go over all of his reports and take that under advisement. Is there anything else that you require from me, Captain? Um, nothing for me. Is there anything else that you would like to ask me? Or Well, there's the buffet. You have I mean, your choice of food, should you want it. The food's nice, but what did you get for me? What did you get me for Christmas? <laughs> um, I can certainly work on that once you get back from your mission. <laughs> look, look, if you're just gonna replicate some random schlock and you think I'm not gonna fuck, you're, I'm not gonna notice. I mean, that's on you. I mean, if I, I'm just saying, like you know, the crew of the Nighthawk appreciates, you know, a little bit of handcrafted personalization when it comes to the things that we undertake. <laughs> oh. I'll get in touch with Starfleet about having something sent over here. All right, that's all I ask. I mean, but you know, I don't, I don't mean to impose. That's you know, if you, if you, that's up to you. Oh, by all, it's fine. I can get you something. It's fine. I mean, if you weren't planning to, I mean, the day, I, I'm not, I don't want to twist your arm or anything. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Just. <laughs> all right. So while the captains are having their powwow, um, who's uh, is anyone else wish to do anything on the station? Um, let's go down the list. Um, the list is actually kind of slim at the moment. Um, Mr. Haran, or sorry, Poran? Yes, Poran. Uh, what is it? Do, are you doing anything in particular on the station? I can't hear you. Testing, testing. There you are. Hello. Okay. I didn't know if I was allowed on the station. <laughs> oh. oh. I uh, thought we were kind of keeping me quiet um, at the point because of the uh, whole uh, you... commerce thing. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, is Bashir doing anything? Uh, sitting in his room. <laughs> okay. Still confined to quarters. All right. Still confined to quarters, <laughs> as far as I know. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Nadan. I have a stupid, just procedural question. Sure. Um, last session, the Dan's right leg was injured, mm -hmm. and she incurred some stress. Is that? Can I? Is there a specific procedure I need to go through to alleviate the injury slash stress? Uh nope. That, reset. That's all cleared between the episodes, unless I say otherwise. Cool. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah, you had a few all hours right. to sit in a medical bay, and you're perfectly fine. Yep. Yeah, then Dan is probably exploring the ship because. She's, you know, new to the ship, so she's trying to figure out everything she can about it. Probably uh, got to in trouble for pressing buttons she shouldn't have. <laughs> All right. Um, anywhere in particular you're looking at? Probably just trying to get a like as good of a view of the place as possible. Probably spend some time in sick bay engineering. All right. Probably stuck up to uh, up to command and hung around there on the bridge okay. until someone looked at her weirdly and then made a run for it. Fair enough. Okay, uh, sounds like all uh, station activities are confined to the ship. Uh, so, Sangral, you can have your ship leave now. You can wait until after New Year's. What would you like to do? I think I'm going to obviously start getting to know uh, these two other new crew members since I haven't gotten a chance to after Christmas. All right. So I think I'll go stop by and uh, pop in with uh, Lieutenant Nadan first. Okay. Uh, you find her poking around the intelligence center because that is what she does. Rumor has it. There's some girl, and there is Miss Nadan. So you are, um, Lieutenant Nadan, you're marveling over the intricacy of a specifically designed intelligence uh, analytics center. So you don't get to play with this type of toy on the Black Shield, that's for sure. Not so much. And all of us think, 
think astrometrics, but for intelligence. Gotcha. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Captain Singral strolls in. So before this conversation starts, to refresh my memory, what was the name of the planet that we were on last session? Uh, the name of the planet you were on was Etov. Gotcha. Well, I hope you're acclimating nicely, Lieutenant Nadan. Oh, Captain. Um, I'm sorry I didn't notice you'd come in. I am. Um, thank you for asking. I mean, are you sure you didn't notice? I'm pretty sure I set the computer to make all these uh, door swooshes a little bit louder. I do have a habit of changing things on the fly. I mean, that does sound like an excellent and good use of any engineer's time to add that to a ship, but I will admit I wasn't looking for it specifically. Well, I would imagine that in terms of your your specific position and requirement that there's a lot of things that you're going to have to look for a little bit more closely. I suppose looking for it is one thing, hearing for it is another. Perhaps my eyes are a little bit of better use to me than my ears. Uh, well, at least on this ship, believe me, we'll be able to train that into you real quick. So, But I do have to ask about the Black Shield. When you and the other, when you and your friend, the lieutenant, were on Etov, I don't really feel like I'm necessarily getting the entire story from Commander Troll. I mean, you can tell me yours. And let's put the pieces together one by one, shall we? I wouldn't know why you wouldn't be getting the full story, Captain, but I'm happy to give you, tell you anything, fill in any blanks you might have. How about we start with your mission to Utah first? Okay, let's start there. I mean, we were, you know, we were tasked with going down to Etov in the hopes of, I mean, you were there, you saw what we had to do. We had to, you know, we were there doing just, you know, routine kind of reconnaissance, trying to see what was happening. And unfortunately, not everything went according to plan. Well, unfortunately, not all the members of our crew were able to survive the ongoing conflict. I mean, the lieutenant and I barely made it out alive, and honestly, I mean, my leg was not doing so hot, and the lieutenant, if the lieutenant hadn't basically, like, jumped on a, jumped in front of me and saved my life, I wouldn't be here having this lovely and strange conversation with you. <laughs> well, no one's necessarily knacking your lack of heroism, Lieutenant. But at the same time, now that a little bit of time has passed, what's your view on the situation as a whole? Is there anything that you picked up from it? My view on the situation is this. I see no point in risking people's lives unnecessarily. I think it is, regardless of the point of our mission, regardless of what was or was not accomplished in our mission and your mission to rescue us, I am grateful that, I, that Lieutenant and I are alive. I am displeased that things have gone the way that they went. Sorry, I got a stressful text from someone. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my chain of thought for a moment. Um, I'm pleased that we are alive. I am disappointed that we won't be able to bring the bodies of those who were not able to survive back to their families, but that's how it goes. But you don't resent the mission at all. With all due respect, Captain, I don't think it's really my position to resent or not resent it. I do what I'm ordered to do. That's, I think, what's made me a, what made me a, you know, a successful lieutenant on my former ship, and hopefully, what will make me, you know, a useful part of the of the Nighthawk. I do what I'm told to do, and I do a good job at it. Well, I could certainly respect that point of view, but I have no use for officers that are never going to speak their mind to me, especially one of somebody that's intelligent. If there's something that you if you something that you don't feel like is up to snuff, if you feel like there's a pattern here that you that we're going to fall into, if you feel like there's a trap that Starfleet, the Nighthawk, or even my, my, your fellow crew members are going to get themselves into time and time again, and you don't feel like it's you're ever going to be able to speak up about it. It dooms all of us. I do respect that. I do respect people that want to speak their mind. There's nothing that Don't you have to fear here say, on the Captain, ship. If, if I think you're about to send the ship down, you'll be the first to know. I have no interest 
in dying for a noble or in or unnoble cause of yours just because we're on it. I have no problem with speaking my mind. I just don't see the point in giving my opinion on absolutely everything if my opinion contributes nothing. If someone has already said something to you that echoes my opinion, I won't always be the first to repeat it because I see no, I, if you've got, you know, five people spouting the same thing at you, you accomplish nothing. It's just five loud voices. I think that's the first time in a long time anybody has actually been the straightest with me on the ship. Well, that's sort of, that's the fun parts of intelligence, I suppose. It's the intelligent part of my intelligence. I don't see you, Captain, as someone who has any interest in falsehoods or foolishness. And I'm not interested in either of those things. Although, I do sometimes like a good practical joke. Oh. Well, I'm not the person for that. There's other members of my senior staff that could be more accommodating in that position. Well, I'll see who the good pranksters are. I'll see if I can learn anything from them. Well, here's a lesson that I hope that we that we get to the bottom of sooner rather than later. I just finished my meeting with Captain Crawford, and in this case, I'm going to hand Lieutenant Dan a data pad. And it's, this you. is where we're going to go. These are the people that we need to speak to. And I'd like you to actually speak to the rest of the Cerberus crew, crew members to see if there's anything else that's missing from these reports. Absolutely. It would be my honor, sir. And as long as you're sh just as straight as them, as you were straight with me, I'm sure there's nothing that we're going to miss. Um, I'll see to it, sir. Well, carry on, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I'm going to, on that, I'm quickly going to make available the notes that I gave Crawford on the Jin Sewell for review. I, everyone, here we go. Okay. Um, now I understand Commander Helsing's back. Hello, Commander. Evening. Uh, so the ship is at uh, Deep Space 15, and it is uh, the th day before New Year's Eve. What do you wish to be doing? Well, I want to try to talk to the um, chief engineer and possibly somebody over in science with dealing with holograms about Operation Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Ah, okay. Um, as those players aren't actually here, uh, you will get a... Uh, you find that they're actually quite helpful. They will give you uh, schematics from the former chief medical officer, a hologram known as Galen, who was rather proficient in the use of holo technology. And they wish that you would be... Or they... They give you as much information as you need. Fantastic. This we can get Commander Bashir off and running on this. All right. Okay. I think that's everyone. Uh, does anyone have anything else they wish to do? I'm not hearing anyone. So, um, uh, do... Captain Crawford, if you wish to stick around, would you like uh, Nia to join the crew for this mission? Um, hmm. Sure, let's bring him along. All right. All right, Captain Sangral, you've um, are you? Yeah. Now I can't talk. Universal translator problem. <clears throat> uh, do you wish the USS Nighthawk to depart before or after new, the New Year's Eve celebrations? After. We'll give after. the crew a little bit of time. All right. Fair enough. <clears throat> so New Year's Eve uh, out this far, there is a live streaming, or as close to live stream as possible this far out, um, uh, live stream broadcast from Earth with uh, the Palais de, la, de Concorde which is the uh, Federation capital city in Paris, uh, with a large ball that will drop to the ground come the start of the new year. Uh, 2405 has been a fairly good one for the Federation, 
as many speeches and uh, hired dignitaries are quick to speak about. Uh, they don't mention anything about the potential threat uh, the uh, um, the Zinkethi or the Typhon Pact is posed, or the fact that Starfleet blew up several uh, gates in Tholian space. But everything counts down to zero. 2405 goes out the window. 2406 starts fresh. There is much revelry. Um, the local bar, the Blue Eclipse, um, runs out of the hard liquor for the first time in, well, since its inception about seven months ago. Uh, they have to resort to the synthahol stuff, but by this point, most of the uh, people who are drinking heavily are too drunk to really notice a difference. Yay! Yay! Party! Yeah. Um, yeah. Does the, uh, Captain? Do you wish to? Uh, does anybody wish to do anything during the New Year's party? Get drunk, I guess. All right. People getting drunk. Awesome. And I just observe the crew. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you, you look in to see who's talking about you on the station. <laughs> you know it. You know it. <laughs> All right. Uh, because you haven't... Oh, we actually... Wait, 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 wait. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm very stupid. I should use this time while everyone is drunk to go interrogate people and see what they know about this mission. About the mission. Ah. Right? Okay. So this is going to be a... Roll me a presence plus... Romy presence plus science. I think I'm going to lump intelligent stuff primarily under science for now. Um, and if you have interrogation or conversation, those would be good focuses. Uh, this is going to be about a difficulty of... Persuasion? Ooh, persuasion would work. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty one test. Is that, is, does that mean it's a 1d20? Uh, you roll 2d20. All the time roll 2d20, and you're just looking for one success. Gotcha. And you get two successes, so one mo nice. one momentum. Uh, whoever's keeping track. Okay. Um, you, for the most part, you struck out until roughly around 11:30 at night. Uh, most people really don't are quick to say that the are are proud to say that they were on board the USS uh, Lunette as they rescued the. Uh, crew of the USS Enterprise E and how they were and how they received special accommodations. Uh, however, for the most part, uh, a few probing questions after that, realize no, they weren't actually there. They're just bragging. Uh, you do find two crewmen uh, that are blitzed out of their mind. And actually, this would be a good introduction because I know he's drinking at the party. Uh, that would be Specials Nia. Who I believe is all, who is actually a joined tr no he's an unjoined trill. He's a joined trill. Oh, he's a, he is joined. My bad. Ah, yeah. oh, nice. We can yeah. have a fun chat about being trills. Yeah, yeah. all four of you. Yeah, <laughs> so many trills. Uh, uh Mr. Uh, Jared Nia, you're slouched over at the bar uh, with uh, Commander Dalrum's daughter, um, <laughs> rather close to you. Uh, both of you are pretty drunk at this time, despite Commander Dalrum's um, stern glares. You continue to drink when you are approached by uh, another trill whom you don't recognize. Uh, hi. Hello. Um, Specialist Nia, I presume? Uh, yes. Someone told me I should come find you. They said you knew certain things. <laughs> he kind of raises an eyebrow at certain things. <laughs> well? She's just, like, sizing him up. She's just, like, thinking, like, how is he so drunk I can't get any information out of him? 
Charlie. She's like debating if she should just like pick him up and like throw him across the room to see what happens. I, She's also thinking probably she shouldn't have been drinking before she decided to start interrogating people. <laughs> I will say for purposes of this, if I need to declare a focus to be somewhat sober with the joint talent, I will do it. Um, if you had the two momentum to spend to get the advantage, you could. Uh, but I think you only have mm-hmm. one momentum banked. I'm seeing two in roll 20, but I, that could be wrong. Uh, it should just be one there. Be one. Yeah. Got it. Uh, what what did you need uh kind of looks at your uniform lieutenant uh oh lieutenant and Adan- Adan- sorry guys oh god i'm so sick lieutenant again sir i wanted to know no need to call need... me sir i'm only a specialist well you seem like the kind of person who'd want to be called sir i like to hedge my bets you never know his eyebrow raises further. She's just like straight up like glaring at him at this point out of just pure annoyance. I think she's just gonna like grab Are we still at Synthahal at this point? Uh yeah. So she's gonna just grab some Synthahal and be like just take a sip while she's trying to collect her thoughts. Sorry, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not doing my best name. I'm that's... a little bit out of it and also running a fever. That's what okay. Can... Can someone just give, remind me quickly what I need to get out of him? Uh, let's, basically, whatever the heck you want. Um, you know from your mission reports that uh, Special Nia was on board the Jin Sul ship and was part of the crew that rescued the USS Enterprise crew uh, from their captured. Uh, however, um, br- uh, he was the one who was interfacing with their technology, and what you're looking to get out of it is whatever the heck you want. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, guys. That's okay. I'm not at my best. I don't expect everyone else to be either. I was running 102 degree fever this morning, so I was like, it's going to be really, oh, if I geez. make it through this, it's going to be really interesting. Oh, boy. Well, All right. well, see what we can do. Yeah. All right. Cool. So while she takes that very calming sip of synthol, she's going to ask him, she's going to look at him and be like, hmm. So I heard that you're quite the hero around these parts. I think hero is a little bit of a stretch. I just shut down a weapon with something I made that. Oh, permission to use that, but lives are at stake, so it's okay. That sounds like a good, a good thing to have done. And how did you know how to make this kind of technology? Um. I just wanted to see if I can make something that could hack into that Star Fleet didn't really know what to do with, and apparently it works. That seems convenient, but good. And this technology, do you think it's something that Starfleet's going to interface going forward? use going forward? Do you think it's something you could ever get kind of legitimized? Um, maybe. I mean, the commander okayed me making it, so I mean, maybe. But if I did, it'll probably take some time because, well, they're all the way over there, just pointing in a random direction. (laughs) And we're here, pointing to the bar. We are, in fact, here at this bar. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Go back to whatever you're doing. Remember, consent is sexy. I... <laughs> He's just kind of... All right. <laughs> Person, no, Dan. Maybe she'll get better at that as we go. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so basically what you got out of that is Jinsu. What Nia would have known, told you had you been sober, was that the technology that the Jinsul uses is quite incompatible with that of Starfleet's. Uh, Seems to run a lot on this chronoton stuff, and he just sort of jury-rigged something together to make it work. There's a lot of interesting information, though, from the chief engineer, uh, Mr. Keevan, 
uh, about Anyon sweeps and how he thinks that at full power it was enough to completely disable, uh, destabilize or possibly destroy the Chronoton things, but at a lesser setting might just be enough to bring them in to sync with our universe where they can be better examined. All right. Okay. Um, anyone else have anything else they wish to do? All right. Okay. Uh, next morning duties. Stay, next morning's duty rotation starts a bit later than usual. I wonder why. <laughs> As folks drag themselves onto the bridge, uh, Erkin is nowhere to be seen. Uh, his combat reports he's in his quarters, and Coox reports that he has had a lot to drink and requests additional time off due to good behavior. Hmm. Other than that, everyone else is assembled. Uh, Lieutenant Thashran reports that the engines are prepped, ready to go, and Jefferson Davis is ready to take the ship out and back into the transfer pub, Captain. If that is indeed where you wish to go. So that is indeed where we wish to go. So go ahead and take us out. Once we clear the station, let's go activate our cloak, a quote unquote, and uh, take us into the hub. Understood, Captain. Okay. So you guys are here. And the black shield is not. With the... Um, you are given the coordinates of gate 24 and the pathways to take to get you out the uh, transwarp hub and into the gateway that leads into Jinsul space. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to roll the challenge or the dice for... I'm not going to roll the test for the active cloaking or active camouflage system because that's a little early for that and it doesn't really work in the nebula anyways uh, entering into the transwarp hub this will be the second time I think the Nighthawk has been in it it's a fairly smooth journey because there's no explosion trailing behind you like the last time and you guys be begin the relatively short process or relatively short journey of it <clears throat> Everything is going well, except until the last uh, quarter of the journey, in which case the ship begins to uh, shudder and shake. And I need uh, J Mr. Jefferson to begin to roll me a control plus con test with a difficulty of three. And the ship will assist with engines plus... Uh, ship will assist with structure plus con. Oh, I got the ship. I got Jefferson. Okie dokie. And uh, that is the three successes you need. Excellent. All right. Oh, I think that's only one. Oh, I'm there sorry. Oh, oh, God. Okay, there's a... Even better. That's five successes. So two more momentum. Holodrick training is definitely... You go, Jefferson. <laughs> Holy moly. Yes. All right. Uh, Jefferson is reporting that the ship is encountering uh, resistance from an unknown source, but he believes that he can push through it. Um, at this point, it feels like you are uh, sort of diving underneath a oncoming wave. So it's a relatively smooth journey, but you know that one wrong move and the ship could um, crash ashore. Uh, so to speak. <clears throat> uh, the sh uh, the uh, station or the ship continues to buck a uh, waver and continues to push through. And then, all of a sudden, you guys appear out here, and that is not a glitch. That is pitch black space. 
So this is very different to what the star charts from the Apophis and the Roosevelt say there should be. Uh, there should be a significant amount of stars. Um, as you disengage from the Transwarp hub, uh, you realize that there's no gate here. Um, the gate that should have been built by the uh, sli by the Slipnears and the Bracer class ships as part of the Transwarp network mapping uh, procedure, this gate is no longer present. And uh, you have a split-second decision to either duck back through the gate as it closes or stay here. <laughs> no, we're definitely yeeting out of here. So, yeah. full reverse. Full reverse. Um, Mr. Davis, um, may I have a daring plus helm test, please? This will just be a difficulty of two. Ship can assist with engines plus con. I'll go ahead and get Davis again. All right. Got the ship. All right, one success from the ship. And another two from Davis. So that is uh, another one point of momentum. All right, you duck right back into the Transwarp hub. Uh, Jefferson, you report that the disturbances are still there. However, you seem to be riding with them in this case. Um, so everything seems okay. Uh, quick question, what do you wish to do? Can we project our destination now if we're riding with these disturbances based on what we know? So okay. we could... Uh, this... Um... Who wants... So we have two intelligence officers, um, one ops. Uh, if someone could roll me... Or if someone could pick up a uh, science character. We'll just cut to the bridge right now. I can do it. I've got good science. Okay. Uh, roll me reason plus science, please. And if you have anything like uh, stellar cartography or astro navigation or transwarp hub, that'd be a yeah. useful thing. I have data analysis. <laughs> And data analysis, not in this instance. Uh, one success. All right. Uh, you know enough to know that if you, that the uh, currents that you're writing, for lack of a better term, uh, seem to only exist within this particular branch of the Transorb hub, uh, most notably the final branch that this gateway, that would lead to this exit point. Um it seems that the whatever is causing the disturbance is forcing you just back to the main path and away from this gate. But that was the gate you were supposed to go out, according to the data given to you by Captain Crawford. Yeah. Speaking of which, where's Nia? Nia should be on the bridge, because that seems like a good place for Nia to be. Ed, when we go back through the gate, Neil will kind of turn around in his chair. Um, Captain, I had what to is this make specialist? A, if I had to make a guess, the Jinsul might have taken care of those stars. Can That's you fast. can you make me another guess that f fills me with core confidence and less dread? <laughs> I'm afraid I can't, Captain. Wow. Considering the interaction I've had with some of their weapon systems, they could probably make quick work. They were working on apparently destroying a sun whenever I shut down one of their weapons, and I, if memory serves me, that was only, like, what, a few minutes, I think, GM? Um, but, so they're, the way that they're based on your calculations, uh, a full, uh, so if our star has roughly, I think it's a roughly 13 billion year lifespan of a regular star, by your calculation, they could eat a star in maybe 100 years or so. 
Okay. So that that so it is possible if they sent ships out to all of those stars, they could eat them all. But it has only been uh, five months since you last saw them, and there were a lot of stars there. So they could have eaten them, it, but the timeline's not quite right. In the possibility is there, but would have to upgrade their technology pretty damn quick for that to happen. Well, considering how things are going so far in the past, and we're still just riding the wave, I'd like to send an emergency uh, Starfleet intelligence message back right. to Starbase Station. Okay. Uh, what do you wish to send them? Well, let's be quick. Uh, et cetera. Uh, Star is gone, <laughs> literally. Uh, wrong projected destination. Uh, Jin Sul may be a culprit. Stand by. Okay. And it's about this time where you are, where the ship is sort of left adrift inside the transwarp hub, or the transwarp network, I should say. Uh, you've been pushed out of this particular branch. Um, Jefferson says, I'll stop, sir. Well, let's uh, get ourselves on sensors and figure out exactly where we are. Very well. All right. Um, so, as we are currently missing our main science officer, if someone could please roll me sensors plus science, please. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. I can do it. Okay. And the ship. Uh, ship can assist. Sensors, science. I think I learned this by now. Uh, <laughs> so, insight, science. For... Gotcha. Okay, that is three successes, so one more momentum. Cool. Uh, so the ship is currently adrift, of course, in the middle of a transwarp network. Uh, exact destination is difficult to ascertain. Um, there are currently uh, three other exits that are mapped that lead to various points within the delta and beta quadrants. Or there's, of course, the way back, which would lead to the Carceroid Nebula and the station. Okay, well, before we actually go anywhere, uh, I want to get astrometrics and stellar cartography on an analysis of the star charts from the previous Federation ships just to make sure they weren't damaged or mm -hmm. Cerberus may have missed something when, we were, when they were pulling that data. Okay. And then we could go ahead and recompare to ours later. Understood. Um, but for now, anyway, I mean, we still got a, pl a uh, we still, you know, got a mission to complete. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and take the most, uh, the exit that gets us closest to the edge of the beta and delta quadrants. All right. Okay. Um, I should also mention that the uh, sensors f uh, from uh, Nadan, uh, looking at whatever was pushing you out appears to have been waves upon waves upon waves of chroniton particles mm -hmm. in such density that is quite frankly baffling to anyone who has even the hintest, I, the barest hint of an idea of what uh, um, ah, blah, now I've lost cro um, chrono, no the time study thing, chrono of a chrono science whatever I've lost knowledge. Yes, thank you. So yeah, far too many chroniton particles, and as you pushed into them, they began pushing you back. All right. So can I uh, do a quick sensor scan of the ship itself? Of Are they affecting us, the that, ship itself? That is a very good question. Uh, this will be a. Uh, uh, let's do reason science, and the ship can assist in this instance also with sensor science. This is going to be a difficulty of three test, and if you have anything like chroniton particles or particle physics, temporal mechanics, stuff like that. We well, also have momentum. You also have momentum. Yeah, I will use a momentum. Okay. Wow, ship's on fire here. 
Okay, that is four successes, so you get that momentum right back. Mm. Uh, the ship is actually bathed head to toe now in chroniton particles. Um, it's unsure precisely how the particles will would affect you if you traveled through the gateway right now. Um, so cleaning them off might be a good idea somehow. I'll let the captain know that... Um... I am not science. <laughs> I have a beat stick. <laughs> I have a beat stick and I can interrogate, but I am not science with this guy. Fair. All information is welcome. In any case, uh, I am going to remember uh, Captain Crawford's briefing, the fact that these things, may, these chronoton particles, have the potential to be sentient. Now, if that's the case, is there any way that I can actually reach out empathically and see if I can sense any intent? Ooh, good question. Um, yes, this will be a presence plus command test. Um, probably a difficulty, th let's say difficulty of four. Oh, okay. Just due to where you are, where they are, and the fact that they have not really been, um, you know where they are yet. Would any of my focuses apply here? Um, Investigation? No, not really. Do Pattern like... recognition? No, not that in this instance. Uh, do you don't have, like, first contact or something like that? I have diplomacy, but not first contact specifically. Yeah, no, no nothing in this instance. Okay, well, probably not xenolinguistics then. Really trying here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, we have a ton of momentum, though. That is true, yeah, but, you know, I'm going to... I'm gonna mine as much as I can. I will spend. Uh, I will spend momentum though. I'll All really right. get an extra die here. Well, that's two successes. You feel a tickling in the back of your mind, but as soon as you try to latch onto it, it just sort of vanishes, leaving you with the w curious sensation of wondering if there was something there at all. All right, well, super cool psychokinetic powers have managed to be failing me. And at this point, I I need to make sure that there's no straight additional damage to the ship. So let's go ahead and clean these particles off, but okay. let's make sure we don't actually, you know, damage or have the potential to actually harm them. And if, let's take as much time as we need to uh, okay. to clear them off and then calculate our, our next course. Okay. All right. Brush so them off. Be gentle. Who's going out there and watching the ship? All right. So what? What is? I think this might be the first, ver the very first ever episode of Star Trek Adventures where we have a car wash scene. Okay. Um, let's do this as an extended task. So let's give it a work track of. Let's do 18 because it's a big ship. Uh, there will be a resistance of two. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three, and there will be a magnitude of four. Uh, so stuff that could be used would be uh, science skills could be used to identify means of get of uh, getting the particles off while uh, while uh, leaving them intact. So just you know not straight dispersing them. Engineering could be used to rig the ship with whatever technology is necessary. Um, I'd even allow medicine to be used to analyze the particles themselves once the work track reaches far enough. And, of course, if Liam Helsing just wants to detonate some photon torpedoes around, well, we could probably use security, but that might not end the work track the way you want. We do have the Romulan nuke. You do have the <laughs> Romulan nuke, yes. You remind me of that of every episode. <laughs> one day one day one day so, one day, one day. Well, so I, in my just quick question yeah in my quarters how how not um this year how much access do i have to what's going on well how much would the captain give you that's, yeah, that's what i was yeah i guess it's and, not really for you <laughs> and that's what i was gonna do i was gonna recommend we 
break the glass and bring the XO out again, sir. <laughs> well, to answer the question first, I give you very limited ideas of what our mission is, but this current predicament, you wouldn't necessarily know. Obviously, you'd probably see that we're stopped within within the middle of uh, the space here. But you you don't know you don't know the specifics. You have general the general idea of the mission overview and possibly where we're going, and that's about it. Well, we have to get these things cleaned off the outside of the the ship. Yeah, which means that maybe we got to break them out. Yeah, we got to do some science on this stuff. So, so, I'm sorry, or, out of my room. I'm resorting to the nuke. <laughs> Captain. These are yeah. these are your choices, Captain. You take the prisoner out or the nuke. <laughs> well, I mean, we have supporting characters that have temporal mechanics. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> we, we maximize. I have you. one question here. Yes. Are we technically still in transwarp? You are still in the transwarp network. Yes. You have not exited. I'm going to have Nia take some initiative for this work track. Okay. Um, he's. He's going to take out his experimental device without asking permission from this specific captain. Uh, is there any way that I could modify the transwarp field in order to create some kind of field that would attract the chronotons off the surface of the ship? Question mark. Oh, like magnetizing it. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. That's a cool way to take this work track, sure. Um, that would involve actually taking uh, a shuttlecraft to one of the uh, actual, um, for lack of a better term, support brackets. But yeah, sure. you can do that. I'm not asking for permission. I'll just do this. Okay. It sounds like, sounds like an interesting thing to do. <laughs> All right, so you're going to just leave the bridge without saying anything and go grab a shuttle? Yeah, sure. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, and I thought I was going to jail. <laughs> how far are you yet? All right. Uh, Captain <laughs> Captain Singral, uh, Jaren Nia is... Uh, sta uh, you feel a slight bit of confusion, then some sort of subtle certainty wash over Nia as he stands up and walks out of to the turbo lift. Well, at this point, I'm not going to stop him. But if you, but I totally acknowledge that he's gone, right? Probably, yeah. You're, you're the captain. Okay. You should know this sort of stuff. No, <laughs> just just triple quadruple every, checking. Technically, yeah, a crew, a crew member getting off the bridge and just getting he, in a turbo lift well, probably well, noticeable. Well, he's, <laughs> he's not a crew member of ours. He's not. He's even exactly. Right, but still, number one. Is he giving he's, Mia like some kind of look as he leaves? Nah, I'm just gonna. We're gonna lock eyes as you close yourself, cause the turbo lift doors close. Mm -hmm. But I'll let you go. At this point, <laughs> he doesn't want to get into a ton of trouble when he's on this another ship. Mm -hmm. And like a very quick text message of, like, can I borrow a shuttle to try and magnetize something? Question mark. <laughs> go go do your thing. Let's 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 see what happens. All right. We'll see who I punish afterwards. Whether whether it's gonna be you or the flight officer. All right. All right. Uh, a couple minutes later, as everyone is pouring over information on all the various consoles, uh, Jefferson Davis uh, looks up from his console. Captain, I'm detecting one of the Type Nine shuttlecraft leaving from Shuttle Bay One. Okay, Type 9 shuttlecraft, you said. Is this an authorized launch? Who authorized this? Uh, apparently, sir, Captain Crawford. Captain Crawford? Do you want me to track your Hold up. <laughs> wow. Well, that's just a lie, first of all. <laughs> Captain Sangral gave Nia permission, so... Uh, if, only, if only I use some of the armament of... This is Starfleet intelligence vessel it's to its fullest capability, like a tractor beam. Or the nuke, but tractor beam. <laughs> <will work too. laughs> or the nuke. But we'll go with a tractor beam for now. Okay. Uh, tractor beam will be, I believe that is a uh, control plus security test to actually fire the darn thing. Uh, ship will assist, I think, with structure plus security in this instance. I'm going to use a momentum as well. Okie dokie. 
Okay, you need one more success. So whoever's rolling the ship. Ship coming up. What did you see the ship was, sir? Uh, ship, I believe, is structure plus security. Okay, that is, yeah, difficulty two. You make it. Okay, so, uh, Nia, you have uh, launched the shuttle. You have made it roughly uh, 500 meters off the ship, heading towards one of the uh, major central, stru one of the structural support beams of the transwarp hub. When, all of a sudden, uh, it beeps, a, the ship beeps a couple times, and you're now trapped in a tractor beam. Also, Helsing, you just select the momentum token and hit delete. That's how you get rid of them. Urkin makes. I don't have that option. I get take card or flip card. Oh, really? You, you can't actually delete? No, just. I, I think they changed it recently. Oh, joy. Okay. That yeah. was what I was having the trouble with the uh, uh, when I was running. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I will figure this out, and you guys carry on. Well, in any case, obviously Shut I'm going to open open comms with the shuttle. Shuttlecraft, this is Nighthawk. Stand by for Captain Singral. You know, typically oh. speaking, it's, it's nice for you to say please if you want to ask to borrow somebody else's stuff. Also, I didn't know Captain Crawford actually had it in and steal one of these shuttles considering he gave it to us. Um, Captain, may I actually give back the uh, text conversation that you and I just said where I asked you if I could use a shuttle to try and magnetize something and you told me I could. I don't recall anything on the sort. Oh, we'll send to be, <laughs> to be clear. Uh, to be clear. <laughs> did you actually send one or am I, am I completely getting events out of am I going crazy? I, I actually text. sent the message. Oh. Never mind. I was totally rolling with the idea that you never sent me a message at all, and you just decided to go to the flight deck. No, no, no. As soon as you glared at me, I, I like broke. I'm like, I'm gonna tell them what I have planned. Yeah. Uh, I would have brought the attention that a shuttle had left and had the staff tractor beam standing by. So, if you want me to engage, we engaged. If not, okay. And those were the events that happened in the parallel universe. So, in the real universe, <laughs> prime universe, the shuttle... Time travel's tricky. <laughs> yeah, the shuttle leaves without a hitch, and Nia makes it to a massive support beam that is, you know, it doesn't look that big when it's on the screen. However, as soon as you get there, holy cow, the, the structure measures at approximately uh, 10 kilometers tall and has a rough uh, thickness of 2 kilometers. So after all these things have to project and stabilize a subspace pipeline large enough for Borg cubes to make their way through. All right. Uh, this should be interesting. Um, yeah, let's give this a go. Okay. Okay, uh, so if you could roll me, let's say, um, probably insight engineering at this point. Okay. Um, if someone wants to roll for the Type 9 shuttle, the shuttle could assist. I don't think anyone else is going with Nia, so. I can roll for the shuttle. All right. Uh, shuttle will assist with computers plus engineering. And this is, go yeah, so difficulty of three. This is part of the extended task, right? Yeah. This is part of the extended task, yes. Okay. Um, Transwarp fields is a focus. That would work. Okay. Um, oh, I shall take a momentum to get a third die. Okay. But yes, I have an applicable focus. That would be the three that we need. That is indeed three successes. Okay. Uh, if you could please roll me uh, seven 
Uh, what's your engineering? Your engineering is five. It's so five. roll me seven <laughs> challenge dice, please. Okay. Mm. Okay, that is seven. And there's how much resistance? Uh, resistance of two. Okay. Uh, that'll work because let's see, because after the resistance. That'll be five left, so that is still enough for a breakthrough. And would you guys mind if I stole another momentum to get re-roll those two zeros to see what happens? No, go for it. Go for me. Cool. And boop. Okay, well. So that's, so that's six. So six. Okay, cool. And I will say that Nia also has Miracle Worker, so that's two breakthroughs. Oh, very cool. Okay, so this is now brings it down to a work track of 12. <coughs> a difficulty of, I believe that will now drop it to one difficulty immediately. And magnitude of two left. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the rest of the ship is just sort of watching Nia do his thing as... Uh, Nia, you've uh, because you have had so much time on the Cerberus station to interface with the Transwarp hub, uh, getting the shuttle to interface uh, with a support structure is pretty much child's play at this point. You have all the algorithms stored on board your uh, special tool, and you're able to interface really relatively quickly. In fact, you think that it should be too difficult at all to. Uh, change the properties of the field, at least in this instance, to either dissipate the chroniton particles, either on the ship itself or through clean the entire uh, corridor. Um, you could probably attract more chroniton particles, um, um, or you could um, can use a, an angular containment field to isolate some and do whatever the heck you want to do with them. Um, it's at this point um, that uh, Mr. Helsing, your proximity alarm is, the, the starship's uh, proximity alarm goes off. And it's not hard to see why, as a Borg cube flies right, literally right through the USS Nighthawk. That was weird. <laughs> Every single one of you guys, of course, saw it. Um, you saw it for about 20 seconds, it passed straight through you, and then vanished about 20 seconds later. Everybody on the bridge saw that, right? So what did it actually look like, first person, uh, to SGM, if um, the cube it, passed through the entire ship? Was it like a phase thing? Or? It was a phase thing. So you got to see Borg drones far closer than you would have liked, passing by at speed. Uh, sublight speeds. So we saw the internals of it as it went through us. Correct. Now that go through the whole ship? Yep. Or not just the bridge? Like it went everybody. through the whole ship. So, uh, Dr. Kowax <laughs> rings up to the bridge and goes, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm getting calls all over the ship of a mass hallucination. Is everything okay up there? We'll find out soon enough, Doctor. But stand by. And, and yeah, you'll get a you'll get a call to another one from. <laughs> As I say, I'm definitely calling up. <laughs> all right, well, board cube. It seems like you know, even though I don't want to, all hands on deck. So if Bashir's gonna call, I'm gonna tell him to come to the bridge. <laughs> all right. I called to tell. Um, I think yeah. Yaz yeah, will be the one who's guarding the door. I'll call tell him that to escort Bashir up to the deck. Fight. In any case, uh, sequence of events is as follows. Number one, even though it was weird, you got to shake it off. I want to send another message to uh, Cyber Station mm -hmm. telling them that the Borg are on the move. All right. Regardless of whether it's a hallucination or not, we'll deconfirm it afterwards. Okay. I should note that they have not actually res re uh, responded acknowledging your pri your prior alert. Well, no. hopefully it gets through. Fair enough. Well, the, the, the station have received that yet? 
the station uh the station did not res well whatever is happening on Cerberus station did not uh, has they have not received the message from the Nighthawk no okay cool yeah I'm just asking on Crawford's end yeah so. All right. And we're, it seems like we're in this position whether to continue if we're if, if these chronoton particles don't want us to continue on this mission then maybe they'll just let us turn around and follow this cube or what we think is this cube regardless of which that's a higher priority and that's what i'm ordering okay oh at this point i'll neil will kind of like ping the captain I assume that that means I should probably come back now. Because uh, oh. I assume I would have seen the board cube as well. Yes, you did. <laughs> back. Yeah, go ahead and return to the ship and meet us in the conference room. Okay. We'll do. do you think the shuttle had anything to do with that board cube hallucination? If anything, we'll Just... go pull from sensors. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. When I get back, when I get up to the bridge, I'm wearing like a smoking jacket and triple bunny slippers. Oh, God. <laughs> and I like totally like walk her right over to the science like station and look her up and down and like, pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Helsing just cringes. <laughs> Looks at the captain. And... The, no, the captain's not happy. Very displaced. <laughs> And uh, ah. so I basically, I want to start running um, a test and I want to check straight up what time it is. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so let's um, uh, run me an insight plus science. Okay. Um, because it is a fairly simple test, uh, this is only going to be one degree of success. And just due to the nature of it, no, the ship will not be able to assist. Okay, uh, so that is two successes, one momentum. Well, this is peculiar. Uh, the USS Nighthawk is not able to access any of the Federation's uh, time beacons, which is very peculiar because that's one of the few one of the things that Cerberus Station pumps through the network. Okay, I want to scan the entire ship, mm -hmm. like thoroughly, like. Um, and check for, like, the Chronoton Partridge on the... Or we know for a fact that they are around the ship. Mm -hmm. I want to check and see if, in fact, like, they've penetrated the hull or are um, inside. <laughs> okay. Um, are you using your role as science officer just to ask that as a free question? Yes. Okay. Um, so, can... Um, Basically, the ship is now completely saturated with the chronoton particles, uh, so much so that um, yeah, running everything, running the whole last 20 minutes or so through, not only are you seeing a massive discrepancy in temporal activity, uh, you're also seeing that you are now also out of phase with things. Um, you are... Uh, by pass, you by pass, ah, by easily passing through the chronoton particles, um, and well, by fighting your way through, I should say, rather efficiently, you seem to have pushed your way into the future. And by letting yourself be pushed by the chronoton particles out of there, you have sort of ended up a bit in the past. Uh, however, however, how far? is indeterminate, but considering that there was a Borg ship, it's at least 45 years. Correct. Okay. So can I regulate our shields 
and possibly create, uh, with help of engineering, um, a form of temporal shielding, oh. or... Okay. Uh, temporal shielding is definitely possible. I mean, you know, Captain Janeway did it, so why don't see why you can't? Um, this is going to be a whole new work track. Work track. Uh, let's see what I had before. Uh, let's see. Also, considering that this is a rapidly developing situation, yes, I'd probably take the ship to red alert at this point. I figured you would. I mean, the, the previous work track worked well, so we'll just do it again. Uh, so, if you have uh, science, engineering, uh, those would be good places to start. And this is a timed test. Okay. Uh, I should ask, uh, Nia, what are you up to? Are you continuing your chronoton diffusion tech out on... Uh... No, since the captain told him to come back, he'll come back and probably proceed back to the bridge. Okie dokie. All right, so you come back to the bridge, Nia, just in time for Bashir's uh, revelations. There you are. Oh. Cool. Okay, um... So, insight science, control science, insight engineering, control engineering, those would be good things. Uh, ship can assist with structure plus security if you're working on the shields. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three tests, of course, to start with. Okay. Where are we at on... Um, momentum? Momentum. Uh, you have three so far. Okay. Here's one. Nothing from the ship. Did you say this is an inside science roll? Uh, inside, yes. Ooh. Okay, um, Bashir, you don't do so well this first time. No. Um, yeah, that could be the den. It could be the uh, physics going on in the transwarp hub itself. Uh, very little has actually been done to study the internal workings of the transwarp <coughs> gateways. Uh, Starfleet has been more interested in passing through them rather than actually doing anything with them. Uh, okay, lots of people rolling things, but I'm afraid it was just Bashir that was doing the first task. Um, unless you guys wish to do them yourself, uh, in which case... Uh, so, Miss Nadan, um, let's roll for you. You got two successes. Um, can the Nighthawk please assist, please? Ooh. And Same I, structure security? Yes, please. And I must apologize, I'm really needing to take a break. So let's um, let's start a 10 minute countdown and we will be back at 40 past the hour. Mm -hmm. Sorry <laughs> folks. I've lost my dice rolling mojo for the Nighthawk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Struck out twice. We will be back shortly.
And we're back. Okay, I apologize for that, folks. But we are back, and we are trying to figure out how to protect this ship from whatever the heck is going on outside. So we were, let's see, Bashir did not make any successes. However, Miss Nadan did. Uh, did she? No. Uh, the ship did not assist Miss Nadan either. Uh, can you roll the ship one more time there for me, Helsing? And we'll see. So who is Zobet? Zobet is a uh, supporting character, ah. science officer. They have temporal mechanics as a focus. Well, that's a good one. Well, uh, Zobet, working from the data lab, is able to provide the proper uh, shield modulations. And that must be implemented into the deflector array and the shield emitters. Uh, that should at least prevent the distortions from getting worse. Uh, so if Zobet could roll me... Um, three, uh, five security dice, please. Or five challenge. Nope, sorry. Six, Six. science dice, please. <laughs> okay, that's five. Probably one piercing here because there's a resistance of two, if I remember right. That's right. So one momentum spend would get you... Uh, five work done, which is enough for a breakthrough. And no one's opposing me, so that sounds like what we're no. going to do. Definitely. No, we got the momentum. Yeah, yeah, so, right. yeah, yeah, we're doing it. Okay, yeah. so... That's a thing now. <laughs> 13 of that, difficulty of two, and a magnitude of three left. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, Zabet has earned his commission... And the sh uh, the ship will no will not be uh, further affected by the chroniton particles, should you decide to pass through through them again. Do we feel any sense of this time wrongness going away? Uh, Bashir would have noticed that, and you don't see that at the moment. Uh, you're still covered in chroniton particles. And um, at, at least at the moment, you don't sound like it's going to get any worse. But at the moment, it's not gotten any better. Uh, let's do another us. Uh, who wants to try the next one? Uh, let's see. Okay. That was uh, because three of you tried. So that's three intervals. Okay, cool. Uh, who wants to take the next stab? Back up to me. Okie dokie. Insight science, insight engineering, reason science, reason engineering. Uh, the ship can assist with structure security. Oh, no, sorry, we're playing with shields. Yeah, so engineering or security in this instance now. It's the same. same. Yeah, same thing for the Nighthawk. Mm. Oh, there's a good roll there, Bashir. Fine. Oh, and there's a complication there, Nighthawk. Okay. Yep, I was due. <laughs> okay, so that's two more momentum. And if Bashir could please roll me six science dice, or six challenge dice. Oh, boy. Well, you can spend momentum to re-roll those zeros. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just got two more momentum, so... Right. Uh, that should be a, now three three momentum left there, Helsing. There's the five you need. Uh, five, eight. Cool. So that is eight degrees of success. And this time... Uh, so resistance two, so that is six work done. Okay. Well, that brings the work track down to seven. Uh, difficulty of one left. Magnitude of two. <clears throat> okay. Um, as you are continuing to fiddle and... F um, sorry, not fiddle, that's not the right... 
uh, Star Trek term, modulate the shields. Um, Mr. Helsing, you are getting another proximity alert on your system. Sir, we have incoming. And a well, Borg, uh, uh, you see a Borg sphere approaching from the, uh, it would have been from the Cerberus side of the gateway. And this time it stops. And it begins scanning. So hopefully, uh, to be clear, I ne even though we're under red alert, I never ordered us to come up from black alert. So hopefully the uh, advanced uh, cloaking system is still online. Okay. Well, it did need three degrees of success to see you, and it hasn't seen you. Well, actually, it would need a four because you're still technically sort of out of phase. Yeah, it sees nothing and begins to move away. Well, that was closer than what I'd like. Right. That one seemed real. Yeah. So, with these new shield modulations, we're still out of phase like you just mentioned, right? That is correct, Con yes. So, to speculate, Commander Bashir, if we wanted to, could we pass through these Borgs, these Borg vessels at will? Well, it seems like at this point, yes. Okay, well. I'm not sure I'd want to give that a try. No, it's I'm, a lot yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. This and even if we are out of time, I'm not sure of us affect what effect we could have on the timeline if we were to mess with them. Not that I wouldn't mind putting it to the board whenever we are, but I don't know what effect it could have in the overall timeline. So we would have to hide out for X number of years until the board magically disappeared and then come out again? I don't even think that we can. I don't think. Sorry, go ahead. Did not interfere with anything. I apologize. We're still on each other. Well, we can't hide out here in transport forever. And at the same yeah. time, even though we still haven't determined when we are, if we leave transwarp, does that preclude the possibility of us of us not necessarily being able to enter again? What do we know about the server side of the gateway at this point in time? Can I? Well, we're we're still on the work track, right? That is correct. You still are on the work track. Okay. Let me try another breakthrough on that first before I change direction and figure out where we're. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it feels like we're close. The answer is right there. Right. Um. Okay, so we're trying to make a temporal shield. Mm -hmm. This is more of an out of character question for me. Okay. Um, because technically the Nighthawk is out of phase with our specific timeline, correct? That is correct. You are currently out of phase with whatever timeline you're in. Okay. Uh, this is going to sound weird, but would it be possible to <laughs> cover the Nighthawk in like and somehow like jump to warp to like create our own like Anion burst to somehow return us to our timeline ah I see. so you're thinking about using the Anion pulse that dissipated the chronotons before mm. and trigger that with the impulse drive or whatever to move forward yeah I'm just slinging stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. But... I mean, that sounds like fun to me. But let's figure out Bashir first. Uh, let's see. So, Bashir, you managed to do that with uh, two degrees of success. So you get two, or three degrees of success. So you get two momentum out of that. And you get another complication. Yeah. Which is fun. Actually, I have an idea. You can pay it off. 
Okay. You can take it off of those two momentum we just earned. You could? Just could. Saying. Yeah, I'll get rid of this one. Sorry. Okay. Aw. I know. Okay. Part of me wanted to keep it, but, you know, well, it is. Yep. Fair enough. Okay, so. Uh, huh. we just so lost that's six. Chapter. No, seven challenge die again. Uh, you have uh, six, cha six challenge dice, please. Ooh, seven. Nice. So, uh, after resistance, you could spend one momentum to clear the track. Absolutely. All right, so you're down to two momentum left. Uh, yep, two momentum left. Okay, uh, you have successfully cleared the work track. You have created a form of temporal shielding that should um, not only prevent you from accruing any further chronotons, it also will allow you to uh, sort of pop back into real space, but only once. Uh, so once you do that, you're back in phase with whatever timeline you're in. However, um, you have been so... Uh, int you've been so... What's the word I'm looking for? Distracted with trying to figure out the temple shield thing. Um, uh, we've lost the captain. Okay. Um, congratulations. Again? Seemingly. Uh, Mr. Helsing, Aye, the, sir. Uh, the uh, chronoton particles that have been sort of blocking the way to the um, Chin Sul gateway, uh, they are beginning to actually encroach upon the upon the ship. Uh, they they seem to be moving now of their own volition. Mr. Bashir, anything you can do about these chronotons coming in? Well, the ship itself is safe, but I don't know. Huh. Um, do you mind if I try something, Commander? Or at least pose something? Seems like you and the captain had something going on I didn't quite know about, but if he trusted you, go ahead. Um, well, uh, this might be a different thing from the idea that I had earlier, but would it be possible to somehow put an anion field on top of the transwarp field and then somehow concentrate that as we jump to warp and maybe, you know, just punch our way back into our own timeline? Mr. Rashir, does that make sense? That's outside it makes, of my field. It makes sense, but I've, the problem being is we don't know when we are. But possible. Um, Can we keep pace away from them as they encroach on us? Move farther into the transport pub or back out of it without coming out the other end? Uh, well, the way I'm understanding what's going on is basically, is the transwarp hub basically disappearing in time? Mm. Or is it just the particles are coming through where the gateway was or uh, is or was? The part, the chronoton particles are emanating, are emanating through through the Jinsul gate. Okay. And they have infected you. The, the Transwarp hub itself does not, or the Transwarp network does not appear affected. Okay. That's where I was confused. I thought the hub itself was starting to disappear. Nope. That's where I was mentally picturing uh, it. Okay. Okay. So that, that... We were in, infected with the chronotons all over us. Now we have those off of us and a bunch, another wave is coming at us. Base, uh, more like the tide is rolling in would be a better okay. better phrase. You had picked up some uh, ocean water on you as you ran to the beach last time, and now the water is coming <coughs> towards you. 
but with the shielding on, we still have a wetsuit, but yes. we're still going to get damp. <laughs> uh, a dry suit would probably be a better analogy, but yes. Can we extend the shields a little bit further away from the Nighthawk? Easily. Still be as effective? Fairly easily, yes. All right. Uh, could you do me a favor and roll me a... Uh, actually, in this instance, I'm going to roll as if they're making an attack. Uh, nope, not enough. Um, so the uh, as you extend the shields to give yourself a little more protection, uh, it encounters the encroaching chronoton tide, for lack of a better term. Uh, there's the standard uh, TNG level of special effects as things mm -hmm. crackle across and dance across the shield. Um, but that appears to be it for now. Uh, there is, they're beginning to exert a sort of a pressure uh, because right now you're in phase with them, so they can't pass through you harmlessly right now. And if we go out of phase with them, we're back into the timeline where we're at. That is correct. Any way to figure out the time that we're in? Inside the war, inside the trans warp, I don't know because it's not like we could go by stars or, um, oh, how about obviously our signals are not getting through out, out of the trans warp tr tunnels. If we so, pop out of the tunnel at any location, popping out. On the Cerebus side, is much preferable than on the Jinsoul side of total darkness and nothingness. Quite probable. So I have a feeling, I guess my telepathic abilities are telling me the captain's on his way in. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Mm. The We're captain gonna... appears to be overwhelmed with this sudden onslaught of chroniton energy. And I think, I think, since he hasn't actually reinstated the EXO, I think Mr. Helsing has command of the ship, correct? Correct. Okay. That I do. All right. Oh, I felt he was here, but he's gone. Nope, to do that it. was quick. All right. Let's we'll start moving the ship out towards the Cerebus side and start trying to buy us a little bit more time as Chronotons approaches. Okay. And... In the meantime, as we do that, try to figure out what time it, the time, All do you right. think we can't figure out where we are to, and we'll punch. Okay. Unless anybody else has a better idea. Is there, yeah. with the trans warp, with the trans warp tunnels, mm -hmm. can I, how about if I just send a signal out anywhere and everywhere of like different locations on a federation frequency um just to try to get any connection anywhere within federation lines or yeah. federation allies that would like at least try to figure out when we okay. are ah an interesting idea okay this is going to be a daring plus science Okay. Ship can assist with computer science. Uh, temporal mechanics, computers, um, uh, communications, I, stuff like that. Yeah, and this is going to be a difficulty I, of two. Okay. And we have two. Two momentum, I believe, yes. Yeah, right. I will use one. And what was the ship? Uh, ship is computers plus science. Okay, Bashir did it. What does the ship get? All right, there's that one momentum right back. Uh, you are, by sending a um, non-identifying signal, just um, in computer terms, it's called a network time protocol connection. Um, I assume something similar is, is with the... Uh, Federation, the you receive one back, 
uh, it would be the mid 23rd century. So roughly 125 years, if I recall correctly. Okay. In the past, imagine we can stop Wolf 359. Stop. Do you actually say Final that? countdown. Final countdown. <laughs> With the Romulan nuke, we go back in time and stop Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Somewhere the captain is me is silently screaming. Oh yeah, I I think he's probably uh, not silently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you're in command, but I'm going to strongly suggest no on that. Too far back. We can't hide out that long. All right, your idea. How do we move forward in the timeline? Um, Ness, can we... What is your suggestion again? How do we pop ourselves out? Um, sorry, who was that? Was that Yas? Yes. Or or that must have been Nia. Naya. Naya, there you go. Naya. Sorry. Naya. Or I kind of zone out a bit. What were you asking him? Uh, repeat your plan I, uh, for warp. Your plan, because we got timeline now. Um, okay. We're gotcha. 125 years in the past, <laughs> so we need to jump. We need to get back to our time. So, or we go plan. to Wolf, or we go to Wolf to blow up the Borg before they attack and just destroy the Borg. <laughs> uh, bad idea, because one temporal prime directive, two. Uh, my plan was to essentially, uh, cover the ship in an anion field, and then jump to warp and somehow power that up as we jump to warp to maybe punch our way back through. But would, who knows if that'll that, even work? <laughs> would that be timeline independent? We'd go back to our timeline or close... They're close. <laughs> Plus or minus um, five, ten. Out of character, I have no idea, but me, I probably <laughs> could probably get close. This would be a uh, if someone has temporal physics and can assist Nia. They, you might have a good enough shot. I think it was Zobat. Was the... oh yeah, yeah I can... it was Zobat. Oh, hello, yeah. I hear hi. Oh, no. Everyone's talking over. I heard Nadan say something. I can roll for some back because I know uh, the captain's got some uh, mechanics issues, re yeah. connections, etc. Okay. The captain's doing his best, but I can roll for him as well, actually. Oh, hey, captain's back. Hi, captain. Right. Hi, captain. Okay. Hi there. Happy to see you. We're on our way back. To... Did you? Sorry. So, what am I rolling here? What's the uh, roll? rolling? Zabat. Um, so, uh, you're. I'm assuming Naya's taking the lead on this. So Naya can roll me a. I think at this point it's daring plus engineering, and Yast can assist with probably daring plus science, and temporal mechanics, transwarp hub, warp theory, things like that. Okay. Uh, Zabat, this... not Yast. Or oh, Zabat, sorry. Uh, Yast is on the bridge, not Zabat. Uh, let's rectify that. Um, hi. Hi. Let's see here. Uh, this is um... going to be a difficulty of four test. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a couple ideas here. <laughs> I want to use my experimental device to essentially hack into the Nighthawk system with okay. the captain's permission and kind of give uh, either the Anion field or the warp capabilities like a bit of a boost so maybe we have a better chance of doing this. Okay. Um, so if you want to spend the two momentum to gain an advantage, I will certainly... Uh, oh, with I, the experimental device talent, I always have the oh. advantage if it relates to hacking, which in ah. this case, I would like to use it in that okay. sense. <laughs> okay, so that's going to lower the difficulty by one, but increases the diff increases complication 18 to 20? By two, yeah. Okay, cool. And is the bet assisting with this role or no? Uh, so bet can <laughs> assist, yes. Okay. Um, 
And then I shall pop my determination for any machine is my plaything. The ship is my plaything in this circumstance. I can hear Captain Sengral cringing, but yep, okay. <coughs> um, mind if I spend that last two momentum to get us a third die? Because I feel like we might need it. Yeah, I am all for that. I'm good for it. Cool. Um, because of the circumstance of my role, would uh, experimental technology relating to my device or fireballs apply because of hacking? Um, not in this instance, I'm afraid. Okay. Then let's see how this goes. And that's with a fourth dice, right? The imaginary one? That is with the fourth dice okay. because of the termination. Okay, so that's the number of successes you need. Let's see what Zobat gets. Look, and luckily, that that zero was one away from a complication. So, nice. yeah, that would have been fun. Oh well. And there's oh, well. two momentum from Zobat. Cool. Beautiful. Um, so between uh, Mr. Nia and Zobat, a rather complex series of formula begin appearing across the screen. Um, down in engineering, uh, Thishran's antennas curl in part excitement, part dread at what you're asking his engines to do. And he asks, Captain, are you really wanting to risk a warp jump inside a transwarp hub? Yes? Okay. This should be fun. <laughs> And then he starts and then he starts barking orders to all of his crewmen and engages the emergency disco ball protocol because if we're going to go down we're going to go down in style does it have to be on New Year's because the whole ball dropping thing <laughs> uh, it's kind of the Shran's thing um, so let's do um, so let's uh kick Jefferson Davis. He's been rolling hot all night. Uh, all the coordinates are put in. Um, a micro warp jump through the... So by drifting back into the particles and then initiating a micro warp jump with the anion field um, deployed should be sufficient to knock you back into the current time timeline. And... But we'll have, uh, but both Sushran and uh, Nidan, you guys realize that this will also forcibly disperse all of the chronoton particles currently in the Transwarp hub. Can I collect, before we actually do that, get, well, I mean, before this all takes place, mm -hmm. I, can I get some samples? Uh, okay, how do you wish to uh, collect some samples? Um, a bottle? Time in a bottle? Yeah, just gotta open the window and grab something. No. Um, I just, just like either just get a probe or something to try to collect some samples of the chronotron particles because okay. we still need to figure this whole thing out. Um, okay, uh, this is going to be a control plus science. Uh, this will be a difficulty of. Let's see, because they're, you're currently in phase with them, that lowers the difficulty by one, so it's only a difficulty of two. Okay. Anyway. <coughs> Anything with the ship? Uh, not in this instance. This is the Shrad gotcha. modifying a probe. And again, particle physics, or... Uh, heck, I'd even allow jerry-rigging at this stage. Well, um... I said I got computers. Um, Not quite, I'm afraid. Okay. So if someone can assist if they wish, but... Xenobiology, xenobotany, archaeology. That's really come across as a helpful. No. None of okay. those, I'm afraid. All right. Hmm. 
can somebody roll um uh Yas since he's on the or uh since he's on the bridge or either my somebody from my science department just nope. to Zobat? Uh, Z uh, Zobat is busy working on Oh, he's not doing thing. the thing. So just someone... grab somebody from the science department just to give me some backup on this. I can help out probably. Okay. Actually. Sure, Nadan. Uh, let's have you uh, roll. I got two. What do you okay. need? Uh, insight science or control science? I see one tech. You're rather mute. You're rather you're rather muffled right now, there, Nadan. Mm, sorry. That's okay. You're not feeling well. I get you. Okay. Um, ooh. Well. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, because you're assisting, only the first dice counts, which in this case is the complication. Okay. Oh yeah, duh. sorry. Two more minutes to pay it off. Um, if you want to. No, sure. I don't have any. Oh, we have two momentum left. Yeah, we do. They're okay. using it. Oh, whoops. Don't know what happened there. No, nobody used it. Well, I thought they were just about to, to do the whole trans warp thing. Uh, I was try I, I jumped oh, in to do we that. Got that. I didn't. Back. We yeah, got that back. They got that back. Oh. That's all said okay. and done. So this is too fair fresh. enough. Okay, so you're buying that off. Cool. Okay, uh, Bashir, you send out a multi spatial probe. And using a series of micro tractor beams, uh, some cleverly gen some cleverly uh, created angular force fields, you're able to collect a group of chroniton particles. Okay. And with using them in in a containment field, they are not going to escape. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So if someone could please roll me a task for Jefferson, uh, with a daring plus. Con, uh, ship can assist uh, with either computers con or engines con in this instance. And then this is going to be a I difficulty. Can go ahead and take a... uh, this is going to be a difficulty uh, three test. Okay, uh, ship needs to crit. Ship did not crit. I was about to say, has Jefferson used his determination yet this he has session? Not. I was about to say before the rule, we should have popped his one that says uh, failure is not an option. Well, you can <laughs> use you can pop that now to re-roll that zero. I I think we should probably do that because we need that we need this to happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, agreed. It is indeed for the best. All right, if you could, if Jefferson could roll me another daring con with just one die, please. <laughs> Come on, complication. Uh, <laughs> my focus is what help here. You shut your mouth. <laughs> I think uh, survival should count as a focus. Like, I think does, survival should be an applicable focus here. I, the, so, Helm's operations. Yeah. He'll be fine. Helm operations would work. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, no, that didn't work. Uh, that was yeah. Bad. yeah. Not, uh... Even with that. Okay. Um... Sorry. So that's okay. Uh, you create the micro warp jump, and you will just, with the engines flaring, blowing away all other chroniton particles in its wake, the ship jumps. There is a brief second of zero gravity, as no one's actually tried a warp jump in the transwarp hub before, to my knowledge, and everything res reverts to normal. Um, the, uh, Jefferson Davis reports that the, sh that the jump was successful. Uh, Bashir, you are able to affirm that you have the, uh, you're actually getting a time signature from the Cerberus station. You're only roughly five hours out, so that's not bad. Not bad at all, considering what you were working with. Um, the only one problem... I was going to say, what's the but? There's a but. <laughs> and that but is a Borg sphere that was caught... That was on its way to investigate you as you decided to jump the uh, time. So you now have a Borg sphere in the present day 
and it begins uh, in the middle of the transwarp hub, and it begins to scan you. Oh shit! So he's sitting in the transwarp hub. Yep, you, yep, your, you and the sphere are now in the tra in the transwarp hub. And we are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your vessel. Your culture will adapt to service ours. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Mm. Are we worth to we're not cloaked, I'm assuming. Uh no, not, not after that. No, I'm not stuck. after that configuration. There's no way in hell. I'm just gonna double on. I'm just going to dump us on the space background because I don't have a transwarp hub background in this game. Put the ship here. I walk out to the, walk up to the security station and take take over with the eyes off to the side now. <clears throat> I'm assuming that uh, Captain Sangrel is still unconscious. Oh no! Uh, oh, once no. the uh, particles have were dissipated, the assault on your mind ended, so you're oh. back to normal. And well, in that case, don't actually have a Borg Sphere ping. I thought I uploaded that. My bad. Good news, bad news, Captain. Um, okay, don't be afraid. This is just a stand-in. That, that should be a sphere. I just, for whatever reason, uploaded two cubes instead of a Borg Sphere. Silly me. Um, so at the moment, are we... What does the captain want to do? Well, we're still in the transwarp, correct? We haven't that actually visited right. yes. yet, even though we made that warp, warp, that warp jump. That is right. Uh, I want to lead him. Uh, and, oh, and okay, beforehand, mm -hmm. Commander Bashir does have a small selection of a uh, sample of chronotons yes. that he grabbed correct. before we made the jump. He does. Yes. That? Okay, so we are going back, and Helm set a course for that void, uh, the place with no stars that we encountered originally before we went back through the network. Okay. We're gonna lead, we're gonna try to lead them away from Severus. Okay. <laughs> uh, it pursues and it pursues doggedly, and you emerge, and this time, uh, same gate, except this time the gate is there and the stars are also present. <laughs> oh, just my luck. In any case, there's nothing else in the system, though? Oh, no, nothing else in the system. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. Well, Commander Helsing, I think this is the time for for us to unload our payload. This very, heavy burden, this very heavy burden that we've carried for so very long. Well, we'd have to configure the torpedo. Take <laughs> Well, be quick. No problem. Send okay. the command down. All right. Um, because you're tactical, that gives you the advantage. Um, so I'm just going to say that you have had this torpedo ready. It's just going to take about one round of combat in order for the torpedo to make it from the secure storage to the weapons load. Weapons loading bath to the weapons control system. Roger. So also, beforehand, we go into initiative proper. Yes. Um, has a question. Mm -hmm. Would our since we've been playing so much, being in and out of phase, yeah. would the Nighthawk sensors be able to actually pick up the type of species that are on board this Borg sphere? Um, this particular one, you haven't had the chance to do so yet. It was just entering range as you were beginning to, as you popped, because okay. I let that succeed with threat and then dumped my threat to create said thing. Um, so you haven't had a chance to ascertain its nature yet. Can I, I scan that? And... Absolutely. <laughs> Insight science. And uh, sensor. Yep. Uh, difficulty of one, I believe. Uh, difficulty two. Oh, wow. Okay, so that is there four successes, two momentum. Uh, Borg Sphere Complement, I'm 
believe we are looking at roughly 700 life signs, mostly humanoid, no humans. Actually, very few species of the Alpha Quadrant are present. Um, most You recognize a lot of species from Janeway's trip through the Delta Quadrant and a heck of a lot that you don't know about. Is uh, it, technically, my, is it my, my science question? Yeah, um, yeah. Is it going to be, like, um, from where we're at in the sector? I mean, are there Scorpi? Are there... Um, no, there are... Um, there would be one or two life signs that would match those that you've encountered in the Lasai Expanse, but not many. Okay, so Mostly it's not Delta. from Lasai. Okay. Yeah. Mostly Delta Quadrant. Okay. No, I was really curious to make sure if there were any Zell on board. That's fair. Oh, That's cool. what I was curious to. I was wondering about the <laughs> connection. Okay. So okay. are you going to beam this bad boy in, or how are you going to deliver it? A torpedo. Okay, uh, so we are going to jump into initiative then. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Uh, good guys go first, so... Actually, there's only two of them, so I'm not even going to bother with the initiative chart. Uh, USS Nighthawk, what do you wish to do? All right, game plan, boys and girls. We gotta get this torpedo, and don't forget, we did modify it to destroy subspace. And for the fun of it, I'm pretty much, even though we're trying to get into the shaft and it's probably gonna destroy this cube, we need to make sure we get out of the blast radius before we're stranded in this part of space as well. So I want us to also plot a course out of here while keeping our distance. Alright. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Okay. Uh, so who do, who wants to do what? So there is, uh, you guys get five actions before the round quote unquote ends. Um, I'll be shooting. Okay, cool. Um, uh, if that's going to be a first action, then make it so. This is going to be a control security uh, ship. Do consists. you want to move first? Yeah, I was going to say let's move first. Okay. Let's. Yeah, because, yeah, he's right. This is all rigged to destroy subspace and the whole area around it. So, like you said, we do not want to get trapped here by a complication. Aw. I mean, good idea. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so moving will be a control plus helm, or control plus con, and ship can assist. I believe this is just a difficulty of one test. And for the ship, engines con. Engines con. Okay, that is two successes from the Nighthawk. Who's rolling Jefferson? I'll go ahead and take care of Jefferson. What's right. Jefferson rolling? You do do the best, uh, Adam. Control con. <laughs> I think I heard control con there. Yep, control con. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry about the delay. That's all go. right. And that is uh, sufficient. Okay, so that is uh, three momentum for you guys. Pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Borg ship's turn. Now let's see. Their stats are like that. Okay, so they are... Uh, so are you moving away from the gate? Is that my understanding? I thought no, we're, we're moving, moving uh, towards, towards uh, the you're gate. you're moving towards the gate. Okay, cool. Because we basically want to fire and go. Pretty much. Okay. Kind of like how we did the Tholians. Uh, makes sense. Oh, okay. we're going to run into them. <laughs> I'm establishing a pattern. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay, so the Borg are going to attempt to fire their weapons. Uh, let's see. Okay, 
So not only do they not succeed, that is a critical failure. <coughs> Fun. Okay. Uh, let's see. No, actually, that would be a successful hit, but also a critical failure. So um, I will... Al so basically, what they're going to do is... No, I'm sorry. Because you are one away, you're medium range now. They are not in range. They fail miserably. Uh, yeah, so uh, they are completely just, uh, they have found themselves to be completely and utterly detached from the collective. Uh, this has caused a momentary panic while the sphere re-ascertains its place in the world, literally. Um, yeah, so they do not get their next attack or their next action. Okay, Nighthawk, what do you wish to do? You have moved. Time for firing. Sir. Time to fire. All right, I'm going to pop my determination okay. of once a Borg, always a uh, Greater good balances on a knife's edge. Okay. Good way since we're using the nuke. Fair enough. Space nuke. And then space nuke. Control space nuke. Security. Uh, control security, yep. Um, and because this is going to be a torpedo weapon, um, you give me three threat. Uh, you give me one threat to fire it. I'm basically counting it as a photon torpedo. Check. Uh, okay. Uh, it's range long, so you would increase the difficulty. This is going to be difficulty four test weapon security. Okay, I'm going to burn two determination or two momentum for a or four another dice. die. Okay. Fourth mm -hmm. dice. And do. Th Three more that I take all of it for now. Three, two. Should be able to get it. Yeah. Do you want to take the other one? Control security for you and weapon security for the ship, please. Okay, that is five successes for Helsing, so you get one momentum back. And the ship is weapon security. And that's another point of momentum back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you detonate the Romulan neutron subspace bomb thing. The Borg realize that there <coughs> is no collective here. So they must begin to establish a new collective, and then they literally are wiped out from existence again. Thanks to the USS Nighthawk and a Romulan neutron bomb. Uh, you dive into the uh, gateway with all the uh, alacrity of a swimmer trying to outrun a tidal wave, and pretty much do the exact same thing you did with the Tholian Gateway and ride it all the way back to Cerberus Station. We are going to cut back to the Cerberus Station, where uh, Captain Crawford, uh, you are just recovering from your own you from your own or from your station's own New Year's Day hijinks, which we will cover next in next Cerberus session. In next, in tomorrow's Cerberus adventure, oh. um, when all of a sudden uh, Darval says, "Captain, I apologize for intruding. However, there is a massive explosion happening through Gate 24." Uh, on screen, Lieutenant. <clears throat> uh, on screen and magnifies to Gate 24, where a plume, where it looks like a. Ver a a multi-spatial version of um, Old Faithful it erupts out of it, spewing plasma, uh, errant neutrons, neutrinos, every sort of particle under the sun, and riding it is the USS Nighthawk. Tenant are all open hailing frequencies? Opening, sir. USS Nighthawk, this is Captain Crawford. Captain Crawford, quickly, can you please scan for Borg signatures? Kind of... <laughs> um, 
You'd uh, leave that to probably what Darval. Yeah, I guess. Darval. Darval taps away, uh, confirming there are no Borg signatures oh. other than those emanating from the Transwarp hub, which are already no cataloged. Uh, none other than the ones we're getting from the hub, Captain. Did you oh, well, to encounter them somehow? Well, a really important question. Can you tell me what date it is? I assume what? It's probably New Year's Day 2406 still? That's, or like... Yep, uh, late afternoon 2406. It's New Year's Day 2406, Captain. Well, both of those answers I'm very relieved to hear. Go ahead and mark this section of the hub as uh, destroyed and under quarantine. We got a lot to talk about. Of course, Captain. Uh, and on that note, I think this is a good place to end it. So, thank you so much for all playing. I'm glad that my throat held up. I'm glad that everyone who was not feeling all that well was able to stick around. I hope everyone had fun. And I just realized I didn't even move the um, stream back to the players because I'm That's a bad person. That's fine. Yep. Anyways, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for playing. Uh, the USS Nighthawk will return in January. Uh, keep an eye on the Twitch stream for those exact dates. And until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. E